Hi guys, welcome back to Resin Bell. Today I am going to be making a keepsake photo necklace out of an antique um, silver spoon. So, uh, the idea behind this is to put a printed image inside resin. This is one I made like 2013, I think. It's been a long time ago. I made this when I was on the Ice Resin Design Team. And uh, the image I used had a very old look to it, like a, a sepia tone, and it kind of made the resin look yellow, which it has yellowed a little over time, but it's um, uh, mostly the image that I used in that one. But uh, this is the premise that we're going to be doing, and you can use this with a spoon, you can use it with a bezel that you find at the craft store, which is what this is, and um, you can create a lot of different things. Now, if you have spoons or silver spoons, silver spoons are the best because they are a little bit malleable and you'll need to hammer down uh, the back just a little bit so that it's not quite got as much of a um, curve to it. It helps. You don't have to do that, but it does help when you're trying to get your image, your photo in there. But um, like I said, you can just use a regular um, bezel that you can find at the craft store and this is what I'm going to be using if you have like you know an incomplete set of um, antique silverware from your family maybe and there's a lot of family members and there's not enough silverware to go around you can create these um, photo gifts to hand out and then everyone can have a piece of the set but um, like I said you can use that too so we're going to get into this in just a moment Thank you for watching. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Okay, so the first thing I've done is I have printed a photo. This is a photo of my grandmother that I was named after. And um, I just used a plain piece of copy paper. This is just regular old cheapo copy paper that you can buy at Walmart or any, um, you know, any office store. I have an HP Envy printer and it is an inkjet printer so um, this is an inkjet print on a regular piece of copy paper just a thin piece so the first thing I'm going to do is after printing the photo you've got to let it dry let that ink dry on its own however long that takes it may seem like it's dry but um, give it you know give it an hour let it dry let it cure um, after that you'll need to heat set um, your photo and you can use a heat tool, just adding some, you know, making sure it gets heated up good. You could use an iron, you know, a clothing iron. Um, just whatever works for you. Just heat set, dry heat set that ink uh, so that you can uh, make sure that those inks aren't going to run. Now, not all printers and not all inks are created equal. If you print it and you let it dry and you let it heat and you heat set it and you try it, um, and it's still running under the glue, then, you know, it could just be that your printer or your printer ink does not work with this method. Um, but if you let it dry and you heat set it, you'll have a better chance of this working. Okay, now that that is dry, ooh, my spoon got hot. <laughs> Um, now that that's dry, we're going to try to um, cut this down, and I think I might just do it this way, get an idea of where I want that to fall. And then I will trace around it. out
Now, because I'm doing this on a concave surface, um, the paper is going to buckle or um, kind of fold on the edges. The main thing I don't want it to do is fold across the face of the image. So I'm going to make sure that the face of the image is flat relatively. You can see how it kind of buckles up. And I'm trying to protect the face image. And I'm just going to allow this to buckle in other areas. Just kind of rubbing it. You can use a bone folder if you want. So, you can see that has been shaped to my spoon the next thing I'm gonna do okay so this is Aline's original tacky glue um, this is the best for this uh, purpose that I have found I have on my last video um, talking about um, fail proof paper and resin uh, a lot of people were asking can I use Mod Podge can I use you know Elmer's glue can I use other things and the answer is for the most part, yes, but, <laughs> but, 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 um, I have used a lot of different glues for this process and, um, they are not all created equal. You want, what you want is a thicker glue that has a little bit less water content. Um, I think that helps to create the nice seal to keep the photo safe from the resin and the tacky glue Aline's original tacky glue is like the best that I found. You can buy this at Walmart. You can buy it at uh, on Amazon. You can buy it uh, most craft stores. Um, this is very common glue that you can get. Somebody was saying you can even buy small bottles of this at Dollar Tree. So um, it's very easy to find. Um, but if you don't have this glue, or um, a lot of people that were in the UK or elsewhere in the world were saying that they they can't find this glue, and would PVA glue work? PVA glue would probably work just fine. The main thing is do some testing. Um, use a little scrap piece of paper. It doesn't even have to be big, just a little piece and, you know, paint over it and, you know, do some tests to see if the glue that you're using will work and how many layers you need to use. Um, for the Aline's Clack Tacky Glue, I usually do one layer and then allow it to dry, do another layer, allow it to dry. Um, and that usually works pretty well. So, um, like I said, if you are wanting to use a different kind of glue, do some tests you know, and, and put some resin on some paper to see um, if if it will work without fail. Nothing is 100% fail proof, but um, with the Aline's Tacky Glue, I have found that you can get pretty darn close. So, I'm just going to brush this in. Now, generally, I will brush it on the back of the photo first, but... Um, in this instance, because the photo is uh, um, kind of uh, shaped to my spoon, then this works better. I just want to make sure I have a nice amount in there and that it is brushed throughout the whole thing. This is going to have to dry and it's going to take a little bit to dry. So I want to make sure it's even. There's not any big blobs and like super thin in other areas so I'm just taking time to brush it out and hopefully that will work just fine okay so I'm going to place the photo in there I'm going to spend a little time really kind of working it working it in there
in and I'm going to go over the top. squeezing out any excess that was coming out the sides will help it to stay down I think make sure you don't get any yucky glue on your finger okay now I can go over the top So once I've got my glue on there, I am going to push it all in one direction. So once that dries, then I'm going to come back and go in the opposite direction. So we're just going to let that dry. Okay, so this is dry now. This is after the second coat dried. And uh, now I'm going to take a, a um, necklace. It's a rhinestone metal necklace. And I'm going to use that for the rhinestones around the edge of the photo. And I just took a pair of wire snips and cut the little metal link that goes in between. And it's, very, it's usually very thin and easy to cut. So if you need that, you can use any kind of like costume jewelry, etc. So I'm using E6000 jewelry glue. You can buy this most places. Again, Walmart, Amazon, uh, craft stores, etc. Um, this is just a very good, thin, clear, flexible glue. And uh, I'm just adding a little bit of it to set the rhinestones in around the edge. So now I'm just going to use a pair of tweezers to set the rhinestones in. I usually push the rhinestones together because usually there's a little gap in between. I usually push them together so that they um, create kind of like a wall around the edge. And it can be a little difficult, but um, especially when you have a piece, this one is kind of uh, not moving very well, so it's a little difficult to get pushed together. But uh, just keep working at it. You definitely need the rhinestone links pushed together so um, what we're doing is creating a wall where the resin can't escape it's basically making a little bit of a bezel with the rhinestone chain so you need to push those uh, links together so that the resin can't seep out between so I'm just spent a little bit of time straightening up the rhinestones with my tweezers moving them around in the wet glue and uh, making sure everything's kind of lined up where I want it. And uh, the next thing I need to do is take some E6000 and I'm going to go around the inside of the rhinestones, being careful not to move them out of place. What I'm basically doing is creating a glue wall on the inside of the rhinestones, just to make sure that the resin will not seep through in between the metal links. Now, I am being pretty generous with this E6000. Um, the reason for that is I just want to make sure that there's nowhere for the resin to seep out. And uh, what that means is that um, I'm going to have the E6000 is slowly going to sink into the bottom where the photo is. And that is perfectly okay. Um, once you pour the resin in, you won't really see that because it's clear. Uh, so just leave it to dry mm -hmm. and... Uh, um, continue working okay so this is dry this e6000 is dry um, the point was not to go down over the photo although you know that can um, kind of soak in you know keep your photo safe as well but the point was to make sure that uh, the rhinestones are glued on and that there is a little bit of that e6000 in between each of these links 
so that the inside is sealed so that the resin can't slide out or seep out between the rhinestones. So just be sure when you're adding your E6000 that it is uh, completely um, around, you know, to the top edge of the inside of those rhinestones. Now, when you're pouring your resin, uh, make sure that you do not get it on top of the rhinestones because glass rhinestones, even though they're shiny and sparkly right now, they will go clear in resin. So, um, you know, it, the thing that makes them sparkly is the facets on the top, the edges, um, and that is what makes them sparkly. And once you remove, once you make that all solid looking, then they don't sparkle anymore. So um, keep that in mind when you're using rhinestones with resin. But I think that is ready to go and we're ready to pour some resin in there. Now you're going to see some like discoloring uh, around the edges here on the photo and that is because my paintbrush that I used for my glue was not 100% clean. So if you're going to brush on your glue, make sure your paintbrush is clean because you're going to get some discoloration. You know, anything that's in your paintbrush is going to go into that glue. So don't do what I did. <laughs> All right, so we're going to mix up some resin and uh, get on with this project. Okay, the uh, resin has cured now. It is the next day and everything's looking really good. Um, so you can kind of see how that looks. Um, everything is in place and the photo is just fine. So I think this will be cute. This could be used for a necklace. It could be used for a keychain. It could be have some ribbon tied on the top and uh, hung on a Christmas tree even, you know, so you can remember your loved ones. So um, a lot of fun. And uh, hopefully I answered some of the questions that people had from the last video on sealing paper in resin. If you have any other questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I will try to answer questions. If you have asked, asked a question and you haven't gotten an answer, it's possibly because I've answered it several times already. Um, so check out the comments below or make sure you watch the whole video. Sometimes I'll put as much information in these videos as I can and if the info is in the video then I'm not likely to answer a question from that either. Um, so thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all my subscribers and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Bye.